Hello and welcome to another video and welcome to Terminal 8 at New York's JFK Airport. Today I'm flying Finnair Business Class over to Helsinki and it's a flight that I wasn't supposed to be on until a couple of weeks ago. Enjoy the video, let's go check out Finnair's Business Class across the Atlantic. Today's video's sponsor is Surfshark. First things first, a bit of context. I've been saving this content for a while. It's part of a long itinerary into Asia right at the beginning of March 2020. This was when COVID-19 was seen in the West as mostly a China problem, and it was still considered perfectly safe by Western governments to visit places like Singapore. I hope you'll find the last remnants of normal air travel to be interesting, and I know that many of you watch my videos to live vicariously. So let's kick off with my short connecting flight to JFK from Montreal in Canada. Being a One World Emerald frequent flyer, I was able to pick an exit row seat, which made the short one hour hop to New York a bit more comfortable. New York was not exactly experiencing its best weather and I was glad to be inside rather than outside working in the rain. Finnair uses Terminal 8, just like American, so the transfer between flights is really easy. I have a four hour layover here and my aircraft has already landed, an Airbus A330-300 delivered in June 2009. Incidentally, this aircraft is currently parked at Tarbes Airport near Lourdes, possibly hoping for a miracle recovery from the corona crisis. Anyway, all puns aside, it was great to be able to visit the lounge. We've explored this flagship lounge before, so I won't dwell on it too much, but I was most excited this time to show you the shower suites, which, as you know, are my favourite lounge amenity. These ones are particularly nice. Like I said, we've been here before, there's pretty much everything you expect from a lounge, and now let's cut to learn a little bit more about today's flight. I want to give you a bit of context about why I'm taking this flight. This is not a flight that I'd originally planned on taking. I was going to fly from Montreal to Detroit and then on to Shanghai in China uh, with Delta Airlines in their Airbus A350 Delta One Suites, which is a really fascinating product, something I've never tried before and something I really still want to do. But with all the coronavirus stuff that's been happening in China this year, Delta Airlines cancelled my flight. I got my money back and had to rebook with a couple of weeks notice. Unbelievably, uh, this flight was pretty affordable. So I started my ticket in Montreal, as you saw earlier, heading into JFK, and now I'm off to Helsinki. Um, I've got about a 13 hour layover there and then I'll be heading into Singapore on the Airbus a350 which is a flight of about 12 hours and that will be the subject of a future video on the channel today though we're on the a330 it should be an interesting experience never flown the a330 uh, before with Finnair and it's my first time flying Finnair long haul in any class another reason this wasn't my first choice flight is that I tend to try and avoid eastbound flights from the US to Europe because they can be really, really short. This flight's booked in at about eight hours, but in reality, the aircraft often flies this in seven hours. If you're coming back to the UK from New York or Boston, they can often be under six hours. And because an overnight flight, that is basically your bed for the night, that's your sleep. And even if you've got a flat bed in business class, getting four or five hours of sleep is not ideal, especially when you travel as much as I do. Boarding begins about 40 minutes before departure. As a business class passenger, I'm in group one priority boarding and will be on first. 
Today's video sponsor is Surfshark, an award-winning VPN or virtual private network. Surfshark is part of my personal travel arsenal for a whole list of reasons. If you're not attracted to the idea of leveraging lower ticket prices or staying safe on public Wi-Fi, maybe the whitelisting facility, industry-leading encryption and a quick kill switch in case you lose internet might convince you to give it a go. But I find it so annoying when you can't access some content overseas. Something Brexit will only make worse for us Brits. But Surfshark can help. Activate the VPN and select an appropriate spoof location and voila, the content is restored. It's dead easy and costs absolute peanuts too. You'd be mad not to consider it, especially as Surfshark have a special deal for my viewers. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash winginit for 83% off and three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. So anyway, uh, as recently as the beginning of March 2020, the US was open. So was Finland and so was Singapore even. You could totally travel to these places. China had multiple flight bans though and was the only country at the time of recording that it wasn't actually possible to travel to. Travel was perfectly okay according to the British government and to be honest, all other Western ones too. How little many of us knew about what was to come. This A330 has 45 business class seats over two cabins. This is the front one with 32 seats. My seat 6A is a throne seat. These are found only on the left hand side of the aircraft. On the right, you can see the alternating arrangement with regular seats. I'd avoid row seven if I were you, there's a missing window there. Incredibly, despite booking quite late, one of the throne seats like this was available. These are easily the best seats in the house with double the surface and storage space and exist because the foot space slots neatly between the row of two in front, saving a bit of space. This glass design is over 50 years old and is one of the more distinctive things about flying this unique airline. After a quick loo stop and a browse of the menu, which we'll check out properly later, of course, we're off to Helsinki. Cabin crew, take your door positions. Cabin crew, arm your doors and cross check.
we depart runway 22 left and head out over the sea. Today's trip will cover 4,113 miles in just 7 hours and 28 minutes at a maximum altitude of 39,000 feet. So the seat, it's quirky as you get double storage in these throne seats with the storage areas replicated on both sides. There is definitely no shortage of places to put your stuff, which is ideal for me anyway, as I always have cameras and leads and all sorts to try and look after. There's in-seat USB and universal sockets, of course, and a reading lamp. The seat controls are fine, and there are overhead vents too. The table pops out from the console and has the benefit of being able to fold if you only want to store a drink, and also to move away to let you get out. Marimeco is a Finnish design company which works closely with Finnair and provides the amenity kits on board as well as a few other things like the bedding. This isn't a long flight considering I have to get a night's sleep on board so it's good that the service on board was really quick after takeoff. Hot towels, drinks and nuts were served in the climb and breakfast orders were taken. The crew will make breakfast and wake you just over an hour before landing which helps you maximize sleep. I'd probably say Nordic food is more interesting than it is one of my favourite cuisines, but the menu was pretty good on this flight and I was happy with my choice, a lamb shank with a delicious starter of rare beef. Ice cream is supposed to be a dessert it's impossible for an airline to get wrong, where have we heard that before, but you do need to let it sit for 10 minutes before serving. Oops, never mind. The crew came round with some satisfaction survey cards, although, if I'm honest, I never really fill these in. I was awake for a fairly short time for the whole duration of this flight, so I didn't use the Wi-Fi, which we'll cover in detail in the next Finnair video to Singapore. But in terms of entertainment, Headphones are provided, and while the seatback screens are quite small, they work fine, and there's lots of content. Sadly, as you can see, the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire game robbed me of a correct answer here. Perhaps the screens are too sensitive and work too well? Less than two hours after takeoff, it's time to recline the seat into a bed and get some sleep. The bed is fine, although the feet and head spaces might be a bit tight for some people. I was woken as expected by the crew as the sun blazed above the horizon. It's a new day in the east and we are well into European skies by now. Breakfast was lovely, anything with fish for breakfast will work for me, and with about an hour to go was pretty well timed. I was also delighted to find that Finnair are still giving out chocolates after every meal, even breakfast. I'm not complaining. The in-flight magazine gives us a clue to Finnair's success. It's well placed to connect east and west thanks to Helsinki's geographic location, and the airport is, in my view, the best in Europe for making connections. Passengers with shorter connections can see their connecting gate on the screen here, and it's totally normal to make a connection at Helsinki under an hour.
in summary, a decent transatlantic flight. I had no wish to take Finnair when making my plans, but I was just plain lucky to find a one-way fare from Montreal to Singapore for £1,140, only about US$1,550. The seats are a little bit tired, and this is far from the most luxurious way to cross the ocean, but I've always liked Finnair, which is an airline which does all the simple things properly. I'll soon post a review of the second leg onto Singapore, but until then, don't forget to visit surfshark.deals forward slash winginit for 83% off and three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. Cheers, and I'll see you next time.